expressing gratitude that we are on Treaty 6 territory. This is a traditional meeting dance, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Dakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. My name is Ishabel, and it is my pleasure to be introducing you to this year's 2021 Nelly Talks. So what is Nelly Talks? Nelly Talks is a virtual video series made to empower young women by having strong, independent, and impactful female speakers from all different kinds of backgrounds speak about their careers and experiences. This event is hosted by the Nelly McClung All Girls Junior High Program at Oliver School. This All Girls Junior High Program as a junior high that focuses on the empowerment and development of young women and establishing leadership skills in all those attending the school. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Nellie McClung program and we want to celebrate that milestone with some special alumni speakers. For the past several years, Nellie McClung students have been organizing and facilitating our annual Power of Women event or POW. At this large in-person event, speakers and students had the opportunity to interact in person. Unfortunately, due to the fact of the COVID-19 virus, we are unable to hold this uplifting and inspiring event in person. However, we, we believe that this event will still be a motivational and eye-opening experience for those watching. We are honored and thankful to have had the opportunity to prepare and host this event, and are proud to say that this event has been primarily created by the Nellie McClung students. However, we would not be able to bring this vision to life without the help from our teachers, staff, and the Nellie Ellen McClung Educational Society who helped make this event possible. Without further ado, we would like to present our first speaker in our very first Nellie Talks event. Thank you. Hello, I'm Paula Simons. I live in Edmonton and I represent Alberta in the Senate of Canada. I was appointed to the Senate in October of 2018 alongside my Alberta colleague, Patty Labacan Benson. What do senators do? Well, we do lots of things. First of all, we represent our provinces and our regions. It's a big part of my job to make sure the voices of Alberta and the West are heard in the Parliament of Canada. Before COVID-19, that meant lots of trips around the city and the province to talk to people and to listen to what they had to say, whether they were mayors and councillors or students in school. After all, if I'm gonna represent all kinds of Albertans, I have to know what they're thinking. Now that COVID-19 makes travel a little bit tougher, I use things like Zoom and Teams to talk to people from all across Alberta. But that's just part of my job. In Canada, we have what's called a bicameral system of government. Bicameral is just a fancy way of saying two rooms, because in Latin, camera means room. The House of Commons is the first room. It's where the elected members of Parliament gather to debate and decide. Most members of parliament, we call them MPs, belong to a political party, and the leader of whichever party wins the most seats in an election, or the leader who can command best the confidence of the House of Commons, becomes the Prime Minister. But the Senate is the second room. It's got red carpet, so we call it the Red Chamber. There are 105 senators, and we're not elected, we're appointed, and most of us don't belong to any political party. We're independent and nonpartisan. That means most of us are not part of the government and not part of the opposition. When Canada became a country in 1867, our first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, called the Senate a house of sober second thought. That means we're supposed to think hard about every law. You see, the government and the House of Commons can't pass any bills, that's what we call laws before they're laws, until they're approved by the Senate. So when we get a bill, a proposed law before us, we have to study it carefully. We have hearings and call expert witnesses. Mostly those hearings are in Ottawa, but sometimes we've been known to travel across the country to hear from people where they live. Then, after we've heard from the experts, we think about ways a law might be improved, and we think especially hard about the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms because it's a big part of our job as senators to stand up for the rights and freedoms of all Canadians, especially those who come from smaller groups, we call them minority groups, who might be bullied or face prejudice. 
And it's a really important part of our work to stand up for people against bullies, to stand up for people who might need our help. If we have changes we'd like to see, we suggest amendments. Those are rewrites we think would make a bill better. And then we debate. If we convince enough other senators that we have a good idea, we pass those amendments and send them back to the House of Commons and the government for their consideration. Sometimes the government says, thank you, senators. That's a really good idea, and we're glad you suggested it. We'll add your amendment to the bill right now. Sometimes the government says, well, senators, that's an interesting suggestion. Maybe it's something we'll think about for later, but this isn't the right time. And sometimes the government just says, nope, we don't think that's a good idea at all, and we're not going to do it. Now, if enough senators disagree with the government, we do have the power to stop or kill the bill. But we don't use that power very often. We're not elected, and so we don't like to stand in the way of an elected government that was freely chosen by the people of Canada. After all, this is a democracy, and we're only appointed. But sometimes we have to say no if the government is doing something that goes against the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and against the Constitution. And because we're appointed and not elected, we have the power to do that without worrying about offending the majority of Canadians. Because sometimes we have to put the brakes on very bad ideas that discriminate against minority groups or that hurt our regions. We don't do it very often. It's a very special power and we don't want to abuse it. We have to use it very responsibly. Today, half of all senators are men, which means half are women. We're equal, but it took a long time. Until 1929, women couldn't even be senators. That was the year that Henrietta Muir Edwards, Irene Parlby, Louise McKinney, Emily Murphy, and Nellie McClung won the person's case. The case that said women in Canada were people, equal people, with equal rights and privileges under the law, including the right to sit in the Senate. The first woman was appointed to the Senate in 1930, but it took until 2020 before we got to the point where women made up 50% of senators. It was a long fight. The Senate today is also much more multicultural than it's ever been. In the beginning, the only senators were rich white men. Now we better represent the real diversity of Canada. Now, I'll let you in a secret. I did not start life as a senator. I started off, like everyone else, as a baby. I was born in Edmonton and I grew up here. My father's family were Jewish immigrants who fled violence and discrimination in Russia and came to Canada to start a new life. My father grew up in the village of Round Hill, Alberta and he and his twin brother both grew up to be lawyers who fought for justice and civil rights. My father and my uncle taught me to stand up for the rights of others and to stand up to bullies of all kinds. My mother and her family came to Alberta as refugees after the Second World War. My mom loved books and reading, and she taught me to love them too. My brother and I were lucky to have parents who inspired us to stand up for our principles and who inspired our love of learning. I studied hard in school. In junior high and high school, I confess I was the kind of total nerd who acted in the school play, wrote for the school newspaper, served on the students' union, and was a very passionate member of my high school debate team. At the University of Alberta, I studied English literature, and I kept on debating. My partner and I were even Western Canadian University debate championships. All my hard work as a student paid off. I won enough scholarships that I was able to attend the wonderful Stanford University in California, where I took a master's degree in journalism. And then I spent the next 30 years working as a journalist. I started off writing for magazines. Then I spent a few years as a producer with the CBC, but I spent most of my career with the Edmonton Journal. I worked on all kinds of stories, stories about politics, stories about crime, stories about immigration, stories about theater and literature, stories about schools, stories about whatever was going on in our community. I worked with a great team of reporters and editors, and we did some really important stories that won national awards. I also did some very silly stories that were meant to make people laugh. 
I represented the Edmonton Journal in the Kerry West Parade. And I even partnered with my daughter to write a children's play for the Edmonton Fringe Festival based on a Jewish folktale. A daughter, you ask? Yes, I'm also a working mom. I married a boy that I met at the University of Alberta Debate Club, in fact, and we had a little girl of our own. It wasn't always easy to have a demanding job and to have a family, but we found a way to make it work. It wasn't always easy to be a woman journalist or a woman senator, but I am so lucky that so many smart, strong women came before me, not just the famous five, but all the journalists and all the senators who fought the really hard fights, who blazed a trail so women of my generation had more opportunities. Now I feel I owe it to all the women who came before me to fight to make this city, this province, and this country better places, and to fight to ensure that women and girls who come after me get their own chances to succeed and to pursue their own dreams, whatever those dreams may be. Good luck to you, and good luck wherever your dreams may lead you.